Hey guys, and welcome to Hara Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be talking about Menetrae disease. So let's get started. So what is Menetrae disease? Menetrae disease is an acquired but rare disease which involves the gastric folds or the gastric rugi of the stomach. In a normal stomach, mucous cells in the rugi release a protein called transforming growth factor alpha or TGFA. But in Menetrae disease, the mucous cells in the enlarged rugae release too much mucus, which in turn cause proteins to leak from the blood into the stomach. This shortage of protein in the blood is called hyperproteinemia. Menetrae disease also reduces the number of acid-producing cells, which are called parietal cells, in the stomach, which decreases the amount of acid which is usually produced by the stomach. So in the picture below, you can see this little image, which is this part of the digestive system, and that is the stomach. And this is a normal endoscopic view of what the gastric rugi look like. But in Menetrae disease, we have these enlarged rugi. We also have the mucous cells, which are very large in number, and large cells, which are found in these large rugi, these abnormal rugi. And usually these rugae in the stomach release a growth factor called TGF-alpha. But in Menetrae disease, because these rugi are so enlarged, uh, they release too much TGF-alpha and in turn we have too much production of mucus cells and therefore too much production of mucus. And we also have the loss of the acid producing cells which are called the parietal cells of the stomach. So those are the three main criteria in Menetrae disease. So what are the signs and symptoms of Menetrae disease? Some individuals may not exhibit any symptoms, meaning that they are asymptomatic, but others may experience pain in the upper or middle part of the abdomen, nausea and frequent vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, extreme weight loss, malnutrition, low levels of protein in the blood, swelling of the face, abdomen, limbs and feet due to low levels of protein in the blood, which basically means different forms of edema and also anemia. Something very interesting to note about Menetrae disease is that studies have shown that people who suffer from Menetrae disease may also test positive for an H. pylori infection. So if you guys are familiar with Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori, you would know that it's a bacteria that is usually the most common cause of gastritis and ulcers worldwide. And I did do a presentation on H. pylori, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. But if you want to know more about it, you can give that presentation and watch. But just keep in mind that people who suffer from Menetrae disease may also test positive for an H. pylori infection. And it's also been proven that Menetrae disease in children can be due to an infection with the human cytomegalovirus. So how is Menetrae disease diagnosed? The diagnosis of Menetrae disease is based on the combination of symptoms, blood test findings, the upper GI endoscopy findings, the stomach biopsy results, and a CT scan. The blood test can check for an infection with H. pylori or CMV, which as we discussed earlier was the human cytomegalovirus, and they can also show us a low protein level in the blood. So if you guys remember, I mentioned in the first slide that because of that increased mucus production that's going on in the stomach, we have low protein levels in the blood, which is called hyperproteinemia, and this can also be picked up on a blood test. The upper GI endoscopy can show enlarged folds, which are the rugi in the stomach. And in the picture on the right, you can see those very, very enlarged folds, which have a worm-like appearance in comparison to the normal stomach. So continuing with diagnosis techniques, uh, the biopsy, which is taken during the endoscopic procedure, will show changes in the stomach's mucus cells, which will be enlarged and many in number and acid-producing cells, the parietal cells, which will be decreased in number. The CT scan can also show us enlarged folds or rugi in the stomach wall. So on the picture on the right, you can see the uh, CT of the stomach. And normally that stomach doesn't have these all these folds, these multiple wormy structures. And because patients with Menetrae disease have these enlarged gastric folds or rugi, this is what the abdominal CT shows their stomach to look like. So how is Menetrae disease treated? 
Treatment for menetrier disease includes medications, intravenous protein administration, blood transfusions, and surgery. Individuals with menetrier disease who also test positive for an H. pylori or CMV infection will require the primary treatment for their infections. Antibiotics will be administered for the H. pylori infection and antiviral medications for CMV. So if the patients do test positive for an H. pylori infection, they will require that triple therapy. And as I said, I did do a video on it, so you can check that video out if you want to know more about the treatment for H. pylori. Another form of treatment is an antineoplastic medication called cetuximab, which can also be used in the treatment of menetrier disease. And studies have shown that cetuximab blocks the activity of the epidermal growth factor receptor and can significantly improve the patient's symptoms. It also decreases the thickness of the stomach wall from the overgrowth of the mucous cells. Continuing with more treatment options, we could do intravenous protein and blood transfusions, and these are useful in malnourished or anemic patients because of menetrier disease. And in most cases of children with menetrier disease who also have a CMV infection, treatment with protein and blood transfusions will lead to a full recovery in these patients. Surgery. In patients with severe menetrier disease with significant protein loss, a surgeon may need to remove part or all of the stomach in a surgical procedure called a gastrectomy. And that concludes the presentation on menetrier disease. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care. Bye for now.